Hello, future actuaries. Well, it's always easier if I can make mistakes and you can just hear about them and learn from them so that you can avoid those mistakes as well. When I was going through my actuarial journey, I really felt alone. I didn't really feel like I had many friends that were going through this journey with me. I didn't feel like I had mentors that I could go to to ask for advice. So I really just felt like I was doing this on my own. So in this video, I am going to share with you three mistakes that I personally made and also mistakes that I see from hundreds hundreds of other future actuaries that I have worked with personally so that you can learn from those mistakes and avoid them on your own actuarial journey. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their actuarial dream job. Now let's get into this video. Three, two, one. Go. Hey, I just wanted to pop in here to let you guys know that my audio didn't work very well during this video. So I'm not gonna re-record it, but you'll notice that the audio sounds a little different than usual. Sorry about that. Okay, so the very first mistake that I see so many people make, and I actually made this mistake myself as well, is that they take exam after exam after exam after exam. Now to become an actuary, many of you may already know that there are lots of actuarial exams you have to take, and these are multiple choice exams, and actually there's a whole bunch of information all about actuarial exams in this video right here if you want to know more about them but these exams are tough and they take quite a bit of time to study for usually three to four months just for one exam and hundreds of hours of studying so for many people they want to get these exams out of the way as quickly as possible and I don't blame them I was exactly the same way the problem is when you are studying endlessly month after month after month hours every single day it can get really tiresome it can make you feel exhausted it can make you actually start to dread the actuarial career because you're constantly spending more more and more and more time on studying for actuarial exams. Now this is a big mistake because I do see so many people burn out once they start getting into this trap of taking exam after exam after exam. It's just too much and if you don't give yourself any time to relax, refresh, rejuvenate a little, take some time off from studying, then mentally it just really breaks you down. So what I would recommend in order to avoid this mistake is to plan time away from studying. Spend that three, four, maybe even five or six months studying for an actuarial exam then when you pass it or even if you don't pass it when you take that exam if you fail even you should give yourself at least at least one month off of studying before you start studying for your next exam or your next attempt at the exam this will allow your brain to mentally get away from studying for a bit because I don't know if you're like me you're constantly thinking about how you should be studying whenever you're not studying especially during that time frame as the exam gets closer you start to feel a bit more and more guilty whenever you're not studying for your exam and that mentality of always just feeling guilty or feeling like you should be doing something that you're not, it can kind of really get to you. So I do recommend taking that time off so you just don't have to think about studying. You can do things that you actually look forward to, things you love doing, things that you might not get time for while you have to study for an exam. So please, please, please always make sure to give yourself lots of time off. And even though it might seem like you're not being productive, you actually are being way more productive by giving yourself that time off because your study time that you spend after that time off will actually be way more effective. Okay, so number two thing that many people do wrong or mistakes that they make on their actuarial journey is to think that actuarial exams are everything they are going to need in order to get an actuarial job. Now, many, many years ago, and I actually kind of fell right on the border of this, there were employers that really all they care about was that the candidate had passed some exams. If you had passed maybe five exams, you'd almost automatically be able to get an actuarial job. That is not the case anymore, and I don't think everyone understands that. There are so many other things that you need to do now in order to be a great candidate for actuarial exams. You do have to pass fewer exams, but there are other things that you need to do in order to really stand out. You can kind of think about it like dinner during the holidays. Now, for many of you, you're just watching this after the new year. You've just gone through the holiday season and you may have had maybe a Christmas dinner or another type of dinner to celebrate your traditions. Well, if you are an actuarial candidate that just passes exams and hopes to get a job, it's kind of like having dinner that only has a turkey, just a turkey dinner. Without the gravy, the potatoes, the veggies, and the pie at the end for dessert, it's just not a whole meal. You have to have all the little pieces combined together to make it a great meal, right? That is kind of the same concept as an actuarial candidate. It's not just about the exams, but it's about all the extra things too that you can provide to the companies that you want to work for. So these are things like technical skills, communication skills, and actually I talk a lot about these things in this video right here. If you haven't seen that one yet, it is all 
about a study that I did on 100 entry-level actuarial jobs. I really reviewed them and looked for trends in what actuarial employers were looking for. So this video is so insightful, you'll definitely want to go check it out after you're done watching this one. And that will give you some insight into the other things that actuarial employers are looking for beyond just actuarial exams. And by the way, these are all things that we teach in our Actuary Accelerator community. The Actuary Accelerator community is really my program where I help future actuaries gain all these qualifications beyond just the exams so they really can stand out to different employers and get that actuarial dream job. And the AAC, for those of you that have been waiting to get in, is actually going to be opening in just a week or two from now, so make sure you keep an eye on the website. I will put links down below and details down below about when the AAC will be opening again. You should get on the wait list if you're not already. So is this making sense to you so far? Do you see how these mistakes can come up and they're just so easy to run into? If this is making sense so far, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Now let's get into mistake number three. Okay, now the third mistake that I personally make, and I do see many other future actuaries making this mistake, is that I did not use all the resources that I had available for me in becoming an actuary. There is so many mentorship opportunities, there are so many resources out there that could have helped me, and I just did not take advantage of them. There were classmates that were also going through their actuarial journey, and I really didn't take the time to see what's working for them, what they're doing on their actuarial journey, because that kind of insight really could have gave me some thoughts about what I should be doing differently than I already was, and maybe helped me avoid some of these mistakes. I didn't talk to professors, I avoided my guidance counselor, even though my guidance counselor really didn't know that much about actuarial science, but still, a resource that I may have been able to take advantage of. I never watched one single YouTube video. Now I have hundreds on this channel, and there are so many other great actuarial channels out there that are really there to support you, help you through this, and guide you, and help you avoid mistakes on your actuarial journey. And for me, I for some reason just did not even think or consider to actually look up on YouTube or Google about different problems that I was running into and what I could do to really make sure that I was doing everything that I could to become a great candidate for actuarial jobs. If I had, I think I would have been able to, one, get through my actuarial journey a lot quicker because I would have been able to avoid mistakes and I also probably wouldn't have failed as many exams. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you already know that I failed quite a few actuarial exams and that took a lot of extra time that I really didn't need to be spending. So using these resources that are available to you is one of the best ways to really make sure that you're doing everything you can in the right order, making sure you're doing everything you need to be in order to be one of those top candidates, one of the ones that stand out when you go to apply to actuarial jobs. So now in this video, you have learned the three mistakes that many future actuaries make, and I hope that it will help you avoid those same mistakes, but you also might be interested in this video right here about the three hardest parts of becoming an actuary. So if you want to go watch that one next, I will put links down below in the description. And I also mentioned about the 100 entry level job study that I did. So if you want to go watch that video next to learn what it really takes to become a great actuarial candidate, then make sure you go down below in the description of the video and all the links will be there for you. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye.